Good morning, Matt Schwartz with uh, Chair of the Worksite Wellness Council of Louisville. Matt LaRocco and Pat Fogarty. Uh, we just did, they're actually certified drug counselors. Is that the right term? Yes. Certified drug And, um, and uh, I'm gonna let them share a little bit about what uh, that is, but we had just a great session, uh, a follow-up really. We did something uh, within the past year about uh, drug treatment and drug issues in the workplace, and we talked about that. So I just wanted to kind of get a quick uh, recap uh, from y'all's perspective. So first, you know, Matt, what do you do? You're with the city. Yeah, I work with the Office of Addiction Services and Public, public Health and Wellness. Uh, and a lot of the work that I do is stuff like this, capacity building with the community, um, to build our ability as a community to reach out to people who use drugs and address the addiction of their and, and Pat, your, your background? Uh, my background is, well, what is you doing? Uh, currently I work for Alchemies, which is a biopharmaceutical company, and I do community relations there. And formerly I worked in the nonprofit system, Recovery Kentucky, in a healing place. Uh, working for addiction services. Gotcha. Well, um, so we talked this morning, we had, again, a really pretty lively discussion about the fact that yeah. this is an issue. We, you know, we started with some, some slides and information that it's a huge issue. You know, the percentages are, are off the charts, people not being able to hire or losing employees due to addiction issues. So what, what's the, I mean, give, give, you know, speak to that a little bit. Uh, so the reality that we deal with uh, with employers is that it's really expensive to have to rehire an employee, to have to let somebody go because of addiction, and then to try to find their replacement. It can cost anywhere between half of somebody's salary, depending where they're at, to six to seven times their salary. Uh, and then we know that, that we don't have the workforce right now that meets the needs of employers. There's employers who want to hire people and they don't have the people that they can hire because they can't pass a drug screen. And so we have to look at how do we fix those issues so we can save companies money and save lives at the same time. Right, and then we were also talking about the fact that uh, you know prevention is better than treatment, right. meaning we'd rather catch somebody early. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what takeaways, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, what, what were the things that kind of pulled, you pulled away from this morning that, that, that you know, what, what we might be able to do? I think one of the things that I was really surprised that the group came back with was just the willingness as employers to actively educate their people about risk um, associated with prescriptions that somebody gets hurt or just different things that they can do on the forefront with employees to say, hey, these are some risks that you might have uh, and we're here to help you with need help before things get worse. And then, uh, you know, Pat, just right behind us here, we, we kind of created a list. Tell me, tell me about what we were doing doing here? Well, I, I think a, a hot topic was creating a supportive environment and where people are comfortable going to their employer for help. And I, I think that's few and far between probably in Kentucky. And also understanding that there's, there's stressors at home. And we hear the figure thrown around that uh, in workforce development and, and loss of wages and whatnot, that the United States is spending in excess of $120 billion a year. And we know that we're not factoring in what's going on at home. So it's not just substance use disorder at work. It's also people that aren't sleeping or taking care of, of their grandkids. And there's an effect from the home that they're bringing into work right as well. Um, well, thank you. So I know that, uh, you know, we, again, kind of the takeaway from this morning was we, we want to maybe set up a work group. And the, the objective being that at the end of the day, we've got some resources, some, some avenues for employers to take to address this issue. So what, what's the plan? So with, what we'd like to do is just get a work group together to address these issues, uh, develop in the, in the addiction treatment world just a, a set of best practices. Um, that, that are, are lined out kind of gold standard ways of addressing these issues and getting the best outcomes. We like to develop a set of what we think would be best practices, um, get those thoroughly vetted to make sure that companies are allowed to do them, and then actually sit down with companies who'd be willing to uh, work with this pilot project and put these in place for a year or two at their company, do some research on the, on, while that's going on, and then actually to produce a report that says these are the companies that did this and these are the outcomes that we saw based upon putting these best practices in place into their business. Awesome. I mean, it sounds obviously the fact that we have this issue and it's it's an increasing issue. I mean, it, you know, that was what the statistics showed the, uh, this morning. So it is an increasing issue. If you have an int interest in participating, you're seeing the re uh, video recent or, or pretty quick. Uh, you know, make sure to reach out to us, and uh, if not, we, you know, we'll be able to put together a packet of resources for employers. So thanks very much. Uh, we're here the third Thursday of every month. We're at, at a Baptist Milestone. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks.